What is up, YouTube? I am going to talk today about what it's like to be a medical records coordinator, medical records scanner, or medical records specialist. The first thing we need to understand about medical records is that they need to remain secure, safe, and private. There are multiple jobs with different types of titles in medical records. Today, I'm going to be focusing on your basic medical records coordinator or medical records scanner. I will do other videos on what it's like to work as a medical assistant or medical office administrative assistant from home. And I also will be doing a video on the release of information specialists. There are so many documents out there right now. They have to be released in a secure way. Lots of information about like vaccines and people's care and what's going on right now with the current state of the pandemic and everything else going on. So we have lots of medical records that need to be filed and scanned and uploaded. Also understand that because of this pandemic doesn't mean that other medical procedures have stopped. Patients are still getting surgery. Um, there's still life-saving things that are going on. There are still colonoscopies taking place and heart scans and x-rays. And all of that information can be easily obtained now because of the electronic record. So we're going to talk a little bit about what does a coordinator or medical records coordinator do in a job. So the coordinator is responsible, and this says medical records coordinator, is responsible for quality checks on automated reports, um, receive scans, and guaranteeing electronic filing for assigned products to corresponding members. So you have members, clients, or patients, as they're sometimes called in healthcare, and your job is to make sure any of those tests that are done or scanned in electronic electronically are available to be uploaded or attached somehow to the patient's file. This particular job happens to be 100% remote. I do know that some jobs will actually train you from home remote, one-on-one, face-to-face, um, and or hybrid. So really do look at your different job uh, descriptions when you're looking for these types of jobs. Performs quality checks to maintain integrity of events and criteria reporting. So you want to make sure that the documents are scanned in, that they're readable, that you can see them when you actually open them up after scanning them. So a lot of this information is very important. Keep in mind that healthcare is not the only one or a hospital or doctor's office. Health insurance companies, auto insurance companies, commercial claims, any type of injury claim or anything involving a medical doctor could be a medical record. So for this particular job, you see how it talks about dealing with someone in the auto industry. Maybe you've worked with cars or maybe you've worked with auto insurance or something like that before. But if you have, it might be a way for you to get into the medical field. Some people are just not aware that being being enrolled into auto insurance, especially if you have um, a liability portion that involves medical, there, there will be documents that you will have to scan and upload needed for the insurance company, needed for the person receiving care, et cetera. So if you're ever wondering why it takes so long sometimes for you to get your information, because we need more people out there in the field to do these jobs and coordinate records so that patients could get faster care. So I am going to show you what a typical day is like for me working in medical records from home. So the first things first, two things. I have a to-do list and I have messages. So depending on where you work, you will have some way of communication. I know some jobs have like a secure cell phone line. Others have um, a secure um, like chat where everybody is chatting. 
Others will use a secure EHR EMR system where only those who have proper login can see what's going on. So if I want to see what needs to be done for the day, I can look to the left and it says order supplies. So I'm going to take a look at that ordering of supplies and see what that's about. If I see test, that could be a test or a lab. It looks like an x-ray um, and or an EKG test needs to be uploaded to a patient's file. So I would open up the file and see what it says. It looks like there is some testing that have been put in the patient's chart. So I'm going to scroll down and see if there's a picture of this EKG or x-ray. When I pull down labs, um, it tells us what type of test has been done. And it also tells us if there is a patient's file. Now, right here where it says filing cabinet, that would be a copy or a picture of one of these tests that was ordered. And I'm not seeing anything in there. So my job would be to find any of those test results and upload them into the patient's chart. So first things first is I would look at any tests that were pending, because if it's a pending test, that means the patient didn't get it done yet. So there's no reason for us to kind of be looking for it if it's not there. So this is my pending test window. So these are all the pending tests that this per. Uh, that patients have in the office. You see there's multiple patients in pending test window, meaning that the test was ordered, but they just haven't gotten it done yet, or you just don't have the results back from this test as of yet. So I see my patient in here, patient medical, and I do see this strep screen test in there. Um, so that is something I would be able to open and see. And as I can see, it's still pending. If it had been completed, this button would be highlighted, meaning they got the test done. And if the doctor had viewed the test, it would be linked doctor viewed and then done. So that would be for the test result. If the test had been completed, I can go to the completed test tab and look at any test that may have been completed. And as you see here, that patient medical's name does not show up. So over here, it says there's some sort of EKG for patient medical, but I don't see anything in their filing cabinet. I don't see anything that uh, attaches to this EKG here. As you can see, this EKG is when you get a heart test it monitors the um, electrical activity of the heart. So with this medical test and it being performed, there's no notes here, there's no doctor interpreting. So for that, this information doesn't have a lot of information. I know the patient had an EKG done, but I don't know by whom, and I don't have a copy of that actual test for their file. So I'm going to be looking in the database to see if I can find it and attach this document for the patient's chart. So right now I'm going to show you how to work an attachment or filing cabinet option. If you look up here, it looks like a little filing cabinet on this particular type of EHR. So the patient comes in and they say, I have a new document and I want that document to go into my record. We would go down to the right to new FC or new filing cabinet document. We would search that patient's name. And as we see, we have our uh, patient medical that is right here that we are using. And we have to name the document. So it's going to be EKG exam because we know that's the exam or the test that they're looking for. If your office has you documenting test a certain way, they will tell you. Some places will say ECG test, ECG reading. It really does depend on where you work on how you label your documents. So you're going to put a description of scan of EKG test. 
Okay. So if your patient comes in and wants a copy of the test, you're going to click acquire because that will then allow the scanner option to pop up and you'll be able to scan their document right to their record. But most times patients don't have their records. They're done in an electronic system, uploaded, and we have to actually grab those records and attach them to the patient's chart. So the majority of working from home, you will have to learn how to search for documents, typically existing documents, documents that exist in your database. So if I'm looking at any documents in my database right now, I have immunotherapy notes, I have different colon pictures, and I have EKG right here. Typically the EKG is gonna have the patient's number on it, um, maybe their birth date, but again, this is a demonstration, so this is not a real live patient, but you'd be able to uh, practice and see how to attach patient documents. So I've gone and attached and searched for the existing EKG document that was ordered, and the results are in there, but I need to actually attach the image. So I've stated that it was the EKG exam. I have said that this should go in the patient's folder. So there's different types of folders you can put it into. There's an exact folder for EKG. So I'm going to put it in that folder so you can see those exam results and the chart tab it's going to go in the patient's filing cabinet. Now, you will be responsible for signing or initialing documents that you scan and upload. And as you can see right here, that timestamp is there of the document that I found in the system to attach to my patient's record. So now I'm going to select done. And you're probably thinking, where did my information go? So I'm going to show you how we check for that patient's information. So previously, when we went here, we only had the medical test where it said EKG, and we did not have a plus next to our filing cabinet. Here, if you take a look at our filing cabinet, we now have a document that I put in. So how do we know that that document is there? We are going to check the scan we put in. And if we click this image, you will see that we do have a copy of our sample report for our patient. So when we're grabbing documents, we're actually grabbing documents from an existing file that's computerized it will generate a link and that link we're able to go into to make sure the document is a clean, viable document. And this one is. If the name were fuzzy or we couldn't really see um, these waveforms on here, it might be something we would need to call and say we needed another copy uploaded into the system so that we can actually put it in the patient's record. So when you see this test, you know that this is one that is a viable. So I'm going to show you another action that you can perform. You also may be responsible for checking out any of the tests that may be pending and calling the patient to see possibly if they're going to be coming in to get the test done or if they've had the test done. Um, if you notice that there's a particular doctor that may have a lot of their tests in here, like the ordering physician, and a lot of them are pending, it might be a system thing. So you might have to call medical records and say, you know, I notice all the pending tests are here, but they're not uploaded to my system. So that's definitely something that you can help with. 
Also, sometimes when you scan for medical records, patients will come in or clients or members, as sometimes they call them, and have a document they want in their record, like a physical or a consent form. Maybe they're receiving some sort of medication therapy through another doctor, and they want that record uploaded into their records. So they would come into the office. They've told you they have their records done at your facility. So you're going to look in your existing documents, and you're going to see if any of those documents are in there. So the patient has told you that they receive immunotherapy and they had it done at one of your facilities and you find the immunotherapy files there so that you can upload these to the patient. So our patient today is going to be Patty Adams and we're going to say therapy. And again, therapy. Okay. And we're going to make sure that when we are in our description, that we use the description that our employer tells us to use. Sometimes they're okay with using your own, but a lot of times during the training process, they will tell you how they like their documents filed and or scanned. So I'm going to get that therapy document as you see right here in the blue hyperlink. That means I have attached a copy of that document from the database. And I'm going to make sure that my patient's information goes in the right spot. It's not a waiver or release form or an intake form. It's something that they want filed. So I'm putting it in their filing cabinet. Okay, so now we're gonna sign it and we're gonna make sure, as you see that timestamp is there to say that I have completed it. Again, this blue link that tells us we've uploaded the documents and we select done. So now I'm going to go into Patty's information and I'm going to check to see if that document was put there. And as we can see, the therapy document is there. We're going to go in and check to make sure the document we acquired or got from our system is there. So we're going to click uh, clicked on the filing cabinet and this screen does come up and our blue link. So I'm going to click on the blue link. And when I click on the blue link, it is going to give me a copy of the document or the immunotherapy vaccine. So we see these records. It is a whole copy. We know it's readable. We know our record can be seen by our doctor if he goes in there. Not only does he know that the patient is receiving therapy, he can also review these records. If you have a patient that goes to met different medical doctors, it may take a long time for them to either get a copy, get it printed and bring it to the office. So we need a lot more medical record specialists who can coordinate these documents and make sure they scan them into the patient's document correctly. If a date of birth is missing, if the image is fuzzy, then you may have to go in and make a request for the date of birth to make sure it's the right patient. You might need to go in and say that the document is not readable. You can't really read the numbers. It needs to be a clean document. So hopefully with my medical records demonstration, I have not scared you away from wanting to do this at home. This is a job that is very, very important. Just imagine all of the medical records out there that need to be scanned over the past few years. Medical records is something that helps the patient um, become 
a part of their actual care. The documents are there, the tests are there. They can actually view the portal and maybe see some of their own test results and mention to the doctor some of their potential concerns. But this is definitely something that you could do. So remember, with a medical record specialist, you may have a to-do list, you may have messages that come in on your message screen where you have to call someone back, they may want to schedule a time to talk to you or have questions about how to request some sort of records. And you could be that person that grabs them, scans them, and files them in the patient chart. There is also another job called a medical uh, release of information specialist. So that is something we are going to talk about in our next video. Having a patient call to have a release of their information because they want a copy of their records sent to maybe an attorney for a case, auto insurance, they want, may want their records sent to a specialist. So your job wouldn't necessarily be to scan them in. Your job may be to make sure all of the proper requests and legal documents are in place so that you can release those records. Some of the documents you will need for a records release will be a medical release of information form. You need to have initials. It needs to be dated. If it's not dated and it's not properly signed, then you cannot release those medical records. Another thing to know as well, too, is legally, as I mentioned, you have to have a notice of health information practices or a notice of privacy practices, meaning if any patient requests a copy of the records through documentation, we also have to let them know what their privacy rights are. So if a copy of the notice of privacy practices is not in their chart along with the release of information, we could have some sort of issues. So in my next video, I will be talking about the release of information specialist as a job in the medical field. And yes, and I will be um, telling you and showing you how a release of information specialist job may work. So I think that you'll find this information really interesting about that uh, and about the different jobs within medical records, because some people think, well, medical records, you get a file and that's it. It's become a lot more technical as you have seen and release of information has also become a separate job in medical records of all its own from the medical records coordinator jobs. So let's take a look at some of those job titles. As we saw earlier, we talked about fulfilling the assignments by connecting a report to the patient's record. And I have also talked about the release of information jobs. Let's take a look at how the release of information might be a slightly different description. So the release of information specialist is the specialist that uh, works with the request of patients for medical records. You may respond to phone calls from medical support personnel requesting records or patient identification to be read from the record. You need to log the record request into the system and make sure it is done by according to HIPAA guidelines, Health Insurance Portability Accountability Act. So that means you have to keep things private by law and there's a certain way you need to look at that. As we talked about earlier, you need to look at various dates on your release of information form. And when required, 
um, you need to respond to potentially walk-in customers or clients with requests. If you're working remote, a lot of times these remote requests will come up through like your message center or come up through your message toolbar that something needs to be done or a task bar or to-do list that say these things need to be done. Then you're gonna respond and process the request in the physician's office in a timely manner. So that one is a little bit different. So in my next video, I am going to be talking about the release of information specialist. So hopefully you have found some great information in the medical records coordinator jobs that I have talked about, giving you an idea of what the coordinator does. Let's take a look at some of these salaries we have over here for medical records coordinators. 35, 46,000. So let's type in medical records coordinator salary. I'm actually going to go to Google has a better search engine. So I'm going to type in medical records specialist salary. And we have so many different job titles, as you can see with the top earners and what they may make. If we're going on to Glassdoor, as I mentioned the other day, here is what the base salary, 34000 up to 56000 ensuring that you can attach records. We have a lot of people who have reported their jobs being medical records technicians from different types of organizations, labs healthcare groups, hospice care. So lots and lots of jobs that actually need your support with scanning these records in. So if you're interested in any type of medical records jobs and you want to learn how to do this, let me know in the comments and I will make sure you have a free copy of this demo so that you can practice along with me and or so you can get a feel for what a medical record specialist may do. Stay tuned for my next video, everyone on the release of information specialists out there because we will be looking into those jobs for the release of information specialist. And I'm actually gonna show you that as well. You would have to spell it, right? <laughs> okay. So we're gonna go to, looks like my mouse is acting up here. <laughs> okay, so we see the release of information. And as you can see with some of these, it comes up with 100% remote. We have disclosure specialist, release of information, and we have HIM analyst, release of information. This job is a little more high level sometimes than some of the medical record scanning because it involves the legal process. This job is 6244 base salary up to 62,000 for release of information when it comes to that type of job. So definitely keep this in mind if you're interested in this type of job for our next video. Thank you so much for joining me today for my video in a day in the life of me as a medical record specialist or medical record scanner. I have really enjoyed you coming to my channel today to see a little bit of what I do every day in the workforce as a records technician. These medical records that I scan in really do help the patient get quality care because these records will help 
uh, be faster in order for that patient to understand what's going on them and to get care. As we close out this video, I'm just going to show you another type of document. You may see a scan in the colonoscopy realm. You may get those colonoscopy test results, and they need to be scanned into your patient's chart. So if you like this type of work and you are a technically savvy person, and even if you're not, many of these jobs will train you on how to use their particular software. If you understand that when a test is done, those may be the results. But if there is a picture or image that needs to be attached or maybe a report, you could really make a big difference in acquiring those documents and attaching them to our patient's chart so our patient can get proper care. If you're looking at our patient's chart, you see there's all sorts of documents, x-rays and therapy notes and all of those interesting things in the patient's filing cabinet. So if I go to one of those, like the next x-ray that has been scanned into the system and I click on it, I should see a picture of that x-ray image. So my name is Carla. Today has been one of Carla's career coaching sessions. And that coaching session is involving what it takes to be a medical record specialist, a day in the life of my job, and something you can most certainly do. Let me know in the comments if you're interested in this type of work, if you want to work from home, and how to get into this job. If you want to know companies that hire for this type of work, working from home, I will put a link in the comments so you can look at the top three places I recommend for you to go in and potentially work from home. Thanks, everybody. This has been Carla's coaching and Carla's training today as a day in the life as a medical record specialist. Please feel free to click that like button, subscribe, make sure that you attend my next live if you want to know about release of information. So I'm Carla's Coaching Careers, career advice from the heart. I love you all and thank you for watching my demonstration. You all have an amazing, wonderful day.